Nunc et in or 
God, our Father, Jesus, our brother, our Redeemer, our Savior, and our friend. This morning, we gather to give thanks to you. We gather to commend to your love and to your mercy the soul of our sister, our aunt, our friend, Vilda. We come mindful that we will one day follow her. And as we come to commend her to your love and to your mercy, we ask, O oh God, that you open to her the gates of larger life. Give her a place with your saints in light. We thank you for her life. We thank you for her witness. All this we ask in no other name but in the name of Jesus, our Savior, Redeemer, and our friend, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Can we all please stand as we begin?
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My dear friends, bless be God. He is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and He is a gentle Father. He is a God of all consolation. It is He who comforts all of us in our sorrow, so that we may offer others in their sorrow the consolation we've received from God ourselves. Our sister Vilda, like all of us, was baptized with Christ in waters of baptism. It is our prayer and our hope that she will now share the vision and the glory of Christ's resurrection. in Jesus and if you have a friend in him as he is a friend of mine please let him know that by singing the song with life what a friend we have in Jesus all our sins and griefs to bear what a privilege to carry Everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden? Come but with a load of care. Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do Thy friends despise, forsake thee. Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou wilt find a soul is there. My friends, to Begonians have a saying which goes like this. The only time you know if your friend is your friend is when your friend asks you to buy cow and gets up and go and cut grass to feed the cow for you. I don't know about you, but this song we just sang reconfirm my own belief in my friend. That when I am too lazy to get up to feed my cow, my friend does it for me. My friend don't love me because I am handsome or my friend love me just as I am. Do you know the name of my friend? My friend's name is Jesus. And indeed, what a friend we have in him. 
I invite you to please sit as we listen to the eulogy. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you all very much for being here. You know, Auntie Velda was not a, a fan of long speeches being made about her, but when you reach the, when you get to 97, which is no easy feat, I, I know that she will forgive me for at least taking a few moments to share a few thoughts and words with you. My experience of Auntie Velda, Auntie Velda, first of all, was born in St. Lucia. She spent her youth in Grenada, and then she spent most of her adult life in Trinidad. So really, my experience of her most intensely was during my youth, um, when she, she would visit Grenada a lot, because, of course, my granny was still there and my dad. And, you know, Auntie Velda, to me, played several significant roles in her life. She played the role of daughter. She played the role of aunt. She played the role of friend. She played the role of sister. And later on in her life, she played the role of a wife. As a daughter, so our, our, my grandmother, um, Auntie Velda's mom, was a very vivacious, social person who had great compassion for people. And Granny was the type of person who would take us on walkabouts in town and be like, hello, darling, hello, this. And I'd be like, Granny, who's that person? She's like, child, I have no idea who that is. But when you meet people, you must be kind and compassionate to everybody. And I feel like Auntie Velda got that from her. She was a, a warm person who loved a good old talk and just was always willing to engage. And as an aunt, I very much saw this with her. We loved Auntie Velda. Those of us who were her nieces and nephews in Grenada really adored her because she adored us. And you know, they say that, that the, the true testament of a man's character is when they are loved by animals and by children. And both can be said of Auntie Velda. She was, she was so engaging and present with us as children. Um, and, and I've never forgotten it. She always called me Rainy, so that name is very special to me. And through the years, even though she lived away from us, we always remained in contact. And the last time she came to Grenada actually was for my wedding. Um, which was very special to me that she made that trip. I saw Auntie Velda as the role she played as a daughter to her mother was just really, truly all-encompassing for her. She, like my dad, was very committed to her mother um, and did her best really to always be there and to be present. And I've always appreciated that about her. And actually, at the end, um, Granny what, came to Trinidad and died here. Um, with Auntie Velda and Uncle Noah, but at, at Living Waters, I believe, was a hospice. In, you know, as a friend, I was speaking to Auntie Mary, because Auntie, so let me explain. So Auntie Velda is 10 years older than my mom. So my mom did not know her as a child. She got to know her as an adult when Daddy met her, like her, her very good friend, Auntie Mary. And I asked my mom, I said, what do you remember about Auntie Velda? And her words were, she was beautiful, she was glamorous, and she was very smart. And this, this is something that I am very aware of. Auntie Velda, I remember her glamour and her beauty. And actually, even up until the end, Auntie Velda was incredibly beautiful. Um, that really stayed with her through the end. I hope I got some of those genes. <laughs> um, and so, Auntie Mary, in talking to her today, echoed the same sentiments as my mother and talked about what a wonderful friend Auntie Velda was to her until Auntie Velda got, became unwell and how present she was in, in their time spent together and what a supportive person she was to her. In her role as wife, I saw, because of course I wasn't present, but what I saw when they were together was how devoted Auntie Velda was as a wife. Um, really always catering to Uncle Norbert's needs. I'm sure Monica saw that even up until the end, right, Monica? Um, even though she may have been in pain and distress, Uncle Norbert was always put first. Um, so she had, she had a great loyalty. Um, and in the end, I, I, I came back to her 
because of the love that I knew as a child that has just really stayed with me throughout my life. Um, and so I, I am very happy for the opportunity to have been able to come back to her in her later years and to have, been, and to have played a role in her life along, of course, with my cousin Stephen, who's my angel um, in Trinidad that really supported me. Um, so, I feel that, you know, even though we are here to say goodbye to Auntie Velda, I, my hope is that our memories of her will stay forever in our hearts. I, I hope that we will forever carry her legacy of grace, of really brilliance, um, of love, that we will carry that through our lives. I thank you to all of those of you, because you know, at 97, you, you've lost a lot of people, you've lost most people in your life, and I thank you for those of you who have continued to see her as a human being, deserving of love and compassion and of friendship. Um, I thank you for continuing to be present in her life and, and for not forgetting her. I thank you so much for that. And so, Auntie Velda, I am, I am grateful that you, are, that you are at peace. I, I hope that you fly with angels. I hope that yourself and Daddy are up there now and Granny and all of you, you know, having a toast to life and, and I wish you well on your journey, and I will forever love you and be grateful for your presence in my life. Thank you. And that's why I would always say, before CARICOM was officially CARICOM, we had CARICOM. Because born in St. Lucia, lived in Grenada, come back to Trinidad, you can't find any better CARICOM citizen than that. And for us who are not Trinidadians, we would probably know that. I'm St. Lucian myself. And if you all would understand a Creole song that would normally be sung for funerals, I would do it, but I'm sure you all might not understand it. <laughs> and it is just for the loved ones saying that um, I love you so much I will give you a little kiss ay 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 do do pa play we kon sa pa play we kon sa ou ka kwaze tche mwe ay 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 do do Pa ple we kon sa, pa ple we kon sa, ou ka kwa ze tche mwe. Mem si mwe ale, mem si mwe mache, mem si mwe dwive. Mem si mwe ale, mem si mwe ale, mwe ni pou viwe. Pa fe pies ka chil, tout sa enitil. Tche mwe se tche mwe, se ou mwe me. Ay, 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 do, do, pa ple we kon sa, pa ple we kon sa, ou ka kwa ze tche mwe. Ay, 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 do, do, pa ple we kon sa, pa ple we kon sa, ou ka bui ze tche mwe. Please stand and let us pray. O oh God, in whom sinners find mercy and saints find joy, we pray to you today for our sister Velda, whose body we will honor with Christian burial. We pray that she may be delivered from the bounds of death. Admit her now to the joyful company of your saints and raise her up on the last day to rejoice in your presence forever. We ask this. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity with the Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Can we please sit as we listen to our readings? The first reading will be 
Psalm 23. Good morning. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We have a second reading, Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in the hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample on the feet. Because he had set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. And let, let us together listen to this song, On Eagle's Wings. It's not on your program, On Eagle's Wings.
my dear friends, please stand for a proclamation of the gospel. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And I will raise him up on the last day. Alleluia. 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 My friends, the Lord be with you. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, O Lord. And I'll read to you from John chapter 11, verses 17 through to 21. When he arrived at Bethany, Jesus found that Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days already. Bethany was only about two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to sympathize with them over the death of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus had come, she went out to meet him. Mary remained sitting in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask God, he will grant you. Your brother, Jesus said to her, will rise again. I know. I know, Martha said, he will rise again at the resurrection on the last day. I am the resurrection and the life, Jesus said to her. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And he who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this, Martha? Yes, Lord, she said. I believe that you are Messiah, the Christ, the Son of God, the one who was to come into this world. My friends, this is good news. It is a gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please sit for a few minutes. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary pure and holy tried and true with thanksgiving I'll be a living sanctuary Lord, prepare me one more time. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. A vivacious woman. 
a woman that was strong as steel. A woman that taught us by example what joie de vivre must be all about. The joys of life and the joys of living. A woman who in her own way challenged every one of us to be the best versions of ourselves. A woman that was a friend, an aunt, a wife, a companion along the journey of life. A woman who was graced not just with three scores and ten or eighty for those who were strong, but rather she was given, given additional 17. She was not just strong. She was indeed very strong. Strong like steel. And today we come together to memorialize her. We come to give thanks to God for her life. But my friends, as I remind everybody who attend any funeral service that I officiate at, I remind them of one simple truth that I hold dear. And that truth is funeral services are not for the dead. Funeral services are but for the living. Funeral services and memorial services are for you and for me that are left behind. Funeral services are moments in time where you and I, as we memorialize the deceased, we ask the all-important question, what from her book of life, what page can I take to put into my own life so that when my time comes, I will be in a position to say, it is well, it is well with my soul, it is well. And friends, this is the reason why we gather we gather for stock taking. And in a real way, in a real, real way, what you and I are doing here this morning is simply dress rehearsal for our own funerals. I am so amazed when you ask the question, how many people want to get to heaven? And you will see every single hand going up. But I remind them of one truth. And I put the question this way. How many people want to die? Nobody puts up their hands. But you can't get to heaven until you die. That's the only way you get to heaven. The gateway to heaven is death. And you ought not to be afraid of it. And so, let us, as we memorialize Auntie Velda, challenge ourselves and I'll give you three pointers I want you to think seriously about. Auntie Velda being St. Lucian must have grown up at a time where St. Lucia was 90% Catholic or put it Christian. I said to people, I never knew of a mandir, a Hindu temple, or a mosque until I came to Trinidad many years ago. Because in St. Lucia, we don't have mosques or mandirs. We don't have, I don't, I, growing up in St. Lucia, I never saw a Muslim. Why do I say this? Because Auntie Velda, must have had a deep and abiding relationship with her God, with her deity. And I very often ask people these days, do you know God 
or do you know of him? Because there is a difference in knowing God and knowing of God. Be knowing God means that I put my total trust. It is self-abandonment. I abandon myself in the hands of God and I know it is all right. I know that my Redeemer lives. I know that he will take care of me. I know that. I don't think I know that. I know that. When you are able to say that, then I am going to say to you, well, you don't simply know of God. You know God. And it is more critical these days more than ever for us to get to know God. I've been for the last two weeks asking the question, where is God? Because even myself, at times I, I, I even doubt, where is God? When you could imagine, just, just, just bear this in mind, that somebody, a human being, can take a knife, a knife, and decapitate a four-year-old with all the screams that are going with it. And if you are decapitating the juggler, there would be plenty blood. Can you stomach that and have the head one place and the body another place? Where is God? Where is God? In spite of all that, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know that. I know that. And that is the challenge that you and I face. As we sit here in this chapel, are we convicted that our Redeemer lives in spite of all that is going around. In spite of the blood flowing through the streets of beautiful TNT. For the last couple of weeks again, I've come to one other conclusion, sad as it may be. I've asked myself, did somebody or somebody's made a pact with the devil for us to have what we have going on? Person seeking power and authority and whatever. But in spite of all that, I am convicted that my Redeemer lives and nothing that anybody could do could take that away from us. When we are able to say that, we know God. We know God. And I say to Christians, Christians these days of all denominations, no matter how you call the God, no matter how you call the deity. And I made, I use the word deity deliberately. How you call the deity is not important. What is important is your abiding trust in him. The God that you serve. The last... And, and, and let me tell you how I came to that deep conviction in knowing that God is good. The last parish I was in, which I left a couple of years ago, was St. Patrick's, Newtown. And I always say to people, um, if you are a Catholic priest, the Catholic Church do pay you. We get a stipend. And in those days, the stipend was $800. Now the give it a little something more. It, it, it is 1,005. And in those days, I was much younger. I had hair on my head still. 
and I say to people, may I use the young people lingo, I wanted to bling bling too. And I'm from St. Lucia and Auntie Velda. She, 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 she loved perfume, eh? Yeah, St. Lucia, and they, I'm French now. And the only perfume that we like is French colognes. And those of you who love French colognes, as I do, there is one thing you have to know about it. It ain't cheap. It's expensive. My $800 could not buy me French colognes. And then I ask a question that people are afraid to answer when I ask it. When you put the collection in the collection baskets, you think I do not want to thief it? Answer me now. You're afraid, let me answer. Yes, I wanted to thief it. Because I could buy my French colognes. But did I do it? No, I did not. And don't praise me because I did not do it. Oh gosh, he's so good, he could say. No, no, no. I was genuine in my prayer. Because I have to put the collection in the vault, I would kneel every time I'm putting it and I, and I would say one prayer, simple prayer. Lord, you know I want, and listen, friends, I, I speak to God like I'm speaking to my friend. Eh? Lord, you know I want to tip the blasted collection. Give me the grace just for today not to tip it. And tomorrow I would ask the same grace. We had four masses. And every four mass, when I put in this away, I would say that. That's why I did not do it. And you know what I realized? That somebody would be coming from St. Lucia or somewhere called, Brother, what do you want me to bring for you? I'm coming in. Bring me a bottle of French cologne. I had so many, so much. I could give people French cologne. And you know why I was able to do it? Because my God provided my every need. I stood on his words and on his promises. Auntie Belda knew that. His words and his promises. Knowing God says that we must acknowledge our frailties. My friends, we all have sinned and fall short of God's glory. And yes, Auntie Velda, like everybody, if she was human, she would get vexed. She was a steel, she, she was strong as steel, but at the same time, she, I don't know, she, she was not taking rubbish. Hmm? So at times she could, she would cross, but again, it's not as bad as this sin is. You know what is worse? Our inabilities to say to each other, I am sorry, forgive me. Auntie Velda knew how to say she is sorry, forgive her. And I often say, why, you know why pe people die? They don't, we don't get them at 97 anymore. And um, those of us who want to live to 97, I'm giving you the prescription and the remedy to live to 97. All right? Because unless we are able to forgive, we are not toting any load. You never see young people, they walk with their backs crunched like they're toting, and like they have the world on their shoulder. Auntie Velda enjoyed life. Joie de vivre. She learned how to forgive. My friends, Lack of forgiveness is such, is, 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 is something that kills us, you know. What people die plenty of from these days is cancer. And any time they discover you have cancer, the first thing they say to you, they saw a lump. Hmm? When you don't forgive, you tie up your inside like a Sunday morning crap. You bong to have cancer. I will not have cancer, you know, because I'll forgive you. Not that you deserve my forgiveness. But I want to be a liberated man. I want... Forgiveness is not for the person you are forgiving. Friends, the person that hurts you, they're happy like puppy. They don't know... They don't care about you. And you're wondering, how can I exact vengeance? How can I get 
back to that person. I want to hurt you. Just oh gosh, you go dead. That was not Auntie Velda. I'm not canonizing her, you know. I'm being practical. I'm being practical. Because if you never get vexed with somebody, um, I want to meet you outside because I want you to tell me the prescription and remedy for that. Learn to forgive. I recommend to your reading the book by Immaculate Ilibagiza, Left to Tell. Left to Tell with the atrocity, the genocide in Rwanda. She was one of the survivors. Hutus and Tutsis are killing each other. And for what? Tutsis have a straight nose because they were more French. Hutus have a broad nose. That's all. That's all. My friends, finally, knowing God means we have to learn to enjoy the things that God has given to us. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. I get a bit um, disturbed when um, preachers wants to, want to make you live like, like, a, um, like a beggar. And what is worse, they tell you to give them the money and they are living it up and they want you to... No, 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 no. That's not the way it is. You work hard, God gave it to you, enjoy it. But as you enjoy the things that God has given to you, remember what Job said. Naked have I come from my mother's womb. Naked shall I return. The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of God. Everything we have is gift from God. And we must treat it as such. Treat it as such. And when we do that, we learn to live life well. In the Gospel of Luke, where Luke has this story about the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, when they recognize Jesus at the breaking of bread, they said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us as he spoke to us and explained the scriptures to us? Let me in turn ask you, did not your hearts, did not our hearts burn within us as this vivacious woman, a woman of steel, spoke to us on the journey of life? Did not our hearts burn within us as she told us the stories about her own life? Our own hope was that she had three more years for this century. Our own hope was that she would live that long. But it's not just that, you know. It's the burning of our hearts as she taught us in her own way the quality of life on the journey of life. May God richly bless all of us as we memorialize Auntie Belda and individually take a page from a book of life, put in our own lives, so that when our time comes, we will be able to say, it is well. It is well with my soul. It is well. Amen. Anel, could you play How Great Thou Art? 
um, if you get the version by Celine Dion, you could play that. Anna, O Lord my God, how great thou art.
thank you. Lord, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of our aunt. We thank you for Velda. Thank you, Lord. Indeed, how great are you. How great are you, Lord. Thank you. Can we all please stand? <coughs> Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and he sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers with his. In baptism, Velda received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead her over the waters of death. Lord, hear us. Our sister Velda was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome her into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, hear us. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and are awaiting the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. Lord, hear us. Many people die by violence, war, and farming each day. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Haiti Ukraine, Gaza, and throughout the world where there is conflict, where there is war. Lord, please show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love and gather them into the eternal kingdom of peace. Lord, hear us. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all those whose faith is known to you alone. Lord, hear us. We pray for Auntie Velda's family, Mrs. Nevius. We pray for her caregivers. Father, they too are seeking comfort and consolation. Heal their pain. Dispel the darkness and doubt that comes from grief. Lord, hear us. We pray for ourselves. We were assembled here in faith and in confidence. as we assemble to memorialize Auntie Velma, Velda. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. Lord, hear us. For our own private intentions, we pray. Lord, hear us. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer Jesus Christ and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in your kingdom. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity with the Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God Father. With confidence and with courage we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. My friends, please sit. And dear friends, before we go our separate ways, may we take leave of our sister, Vel Velda. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our faith, our hope. For one day we will greet her again. 
when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. For it is into your hands, Father of all mercies, that we commend the soul of our sister Velda in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died with Christ, she will be raised up again on the last day. We give thanks for the blessings which you've bestowed upon Velda in this life. These Lord assigns to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to Velda, our sister, your daughter, and help us to remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until, Lord, we all will meet with you and with our sister Velda forever. Can we sing together into your hands? Into your hands. To your hands we commend all. I will proclaim your name to all the world, God of all fathers and our God too. name shall sound from every voice, O oh Lord, soon every heart will worship you into your we commend our spirit, O oh Lord, into your hands. We commend God, for we must die to ourselves in loving you. Into your hands we commend. We gather to commend the soul of Velda, our sister, to God our Father, and to commit his to commit her body to the purifying fires, that it might return to ashes the element from which it was drawn. But it is in the spirit of faith in the resurrection of Jesus Christ from death that we raise our voices in song and in prayer. And because God has chosen to call Velda from this life to himself, we commend a My friends, remember always when I shall we all one day return earth to earth dust to dust ashes to ashes but the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like his in glory he is risen the firstborn from the dead we commend our sister Velda to God our Father, that the Lord may embrace her in peace and raise her body up on the last day. Saints of God, come to her aid. Come to meet her, O angels of the Lord. May Christ, who called you, Velda, lead you home. May the angels lead you to our parents' side. Grant eternal rest, O Lord, 
and may your light be upon her forever. Lord, receive her soul. Present her to God. Present Velda to God most high. Please stand, bow your heads, pray with me. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. Lord, you are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear us, your children, as we cry out to you in our need. Strengthen our faith in your goodness, in your lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto Velda, O Lord. May she rest in peace. May her soul and the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Please extend your hands to the casket as we give her the ironic blessing. Velda, may the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you, may he be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and may he give you peace. And my friends, may Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And our recessional till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. By his counsel, guide uphold you. With his sheep in love and fold you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet, till we meet, till we meet at Jesus' feet. Till we Till we meet again, daily manna still provide you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet, till we meet, till we meet. Amen. 
God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet, till we meet, till we meet at Jesus' feet. Till we Just have a seat, um, I think. And just as we prepare for the um, cremation, let me um, let me just probably say a word of comfort. Pope John Paul II once said, "We are all Easter people, and Alleluia is our song." Auntie Velda died during the season of Easter, during the season of new life. And our hope is that she will get not just eternal life, but eternal and new life on the other side. And our faith is that we will see her, we will meet her one day in that kingdom. Such is our faith with words like this St. Paul says to us, let us comfort one another. So to the family and friends of Auntie Velda, it would be hard. Um, the vivacious lady is no longer with us, but her memory will bring her alive to us. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we are getting the preparation for the cremation. Um, I am so happy. The note I got was we have the cremation permit. So everything is in order. All right. So just you have to sign a couple of documents and then.
Oh! 